welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application today we are going to have the 30th lecture of this course before going to the this lecture in the last lecture what we did was we could able to find out the matrix factorization using different methods Today, we are going to have a generalized quadratic eigenvalue problem. This is a special case of the system AX is equal to lambda X. In this lecture, we consider the generalized eigenvalue problem for a matrix pair AB defined as follows. Given n by n matrices a and b find n scalars lambda and a non-zero vector x such that a x is equal to lambda times of b x. Note that the standard eigenvalue problem for matrix A considered in previous lecture is a special case of this problem when you take b is equal to i that means ax is equal to lambda i times of x which is nothing but ax is equal to lambda x. Now let us define the matrix a minus lambda b is called a matrix pencil. This pencil is conveniently denoted by a b. So when you have a system a x is equal to lambda b x for this we call it as a matrix pencil and we denote it as a b. It is very often referred to as the pair a b. The pencil A minus lambda B is singular if for all lambda determinant of lambda minus B happens to be 0. Otherwise the pencil is regular. We will assume that the pencil is regular which would be supported by an example. The pencil AB defined by A is equal to 1 0 0 0 and B is equal to 0 1 0 0 is a singular pencil since determinant of a minus lambda b is 0. How it is a minus lambda b? Look at this. So we will have 1 0 0 0 minus lambda times of 0 0 lambda 0 0. So essentially which turns out to be 1 minus lambda 0 0. So determinant of this is anyway this is I mean this is a 0 row so the determinant happens to be 0. Since the determinant of a minus lambda b is 0 for all values of lambda irrespective of non-zero or 0 whatever it is. So let us define the scalars lambda belongs to C such that determinant of a minus lambda b is 0 are called the eigenvalues of the pencil a comma b. So now the pencil is very important. So when I write this pencil a comma b it does mean that a x is equal to b lambda b times of x that is a system. A non-zero vector x is a right eigenvector of the pencil AB if AX is equal to 
lambda times of bx, we call it as a right eigen vector of the pencil. The vector y not equal to 0 is called left pencil if y star of a will be equal to lambda y star of b. The polynomial determinant of a minus lambda b is called the characteristic polynomial of the pencil a comma b. This is the characteristic polynomial of the pencil a comma b. The eigenvalues of the pencil a b are the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. So, the eigenvalues of the pencil a comma b are the zeros of the characteristic polynomial. The finite and infinite eigenvalues of a regular pencil. If b is non-singular, if b is non-singular, then regular pencil a minus lambda b of order n has n eigenvalues, n eigenvalues. An eigenvalue lambda of the pair a comma b is also an eigenvalue of b inverse of a. So, that is b inverse of a. If b is singular, then the characteristic polynomial will have degree less than n, degree less than n. In this case, there will be less than n finite eigenvalues, less than n finite eigenvalues and the missing eigenvalue will be set to as infinity. Thus, if the degree of determinant of a minus lambda b is r, where r is assumed to be less than n, then there will be a r finite then there will be r finite, r finite and n minus r infinite eigenvalues. So that means if the degree of determinant of a minus lambda b is r, so obviously r is assumed to be less than n then there will be r finite and n minus r infinite eigenvalues. Let us see through this example, a is equal to 1 0 0 0, b is equal to 0 0 0 1. The degree of the characteristic polynomial is 1 in either cases. The eigenvalues of this regular pencil a minus lambda b are 0 and infinity, right. So, if you look at this pencil, the eigenvalues are obviously 0 and it is infinity from the definition just we had it in the previous example, right. So, the eigenvalues are 0 and infinity. Now, let us look at into some of the properties of the pencil. Eigenvalue, eigenvector properties of equivalent pencils. If x and y are non-singular matrices, then the pencil A comma B and uh, y star AX, y star BX is called equivalent to AB. The following are easily proven properties of two equivalent pencils. One is that the eigenvalues of two equivalent pencils a minus lambda b and y star a x minus lambda times of y star b x they are all the same. If x is a right eigenvector of a minus lambda b then x inverse of x is a right vector of y star a x minus lambda times of 
y star bx. If y is a left eigenvector of a minus lambda b over here, then y inverse of y is a left eigenvector of y star ax minus lambda times of y star bx. Thus, in order to compute the eigenvalues of a minus lambda b, we seek orthogonal matrices to transform the pair a b into an equivalent pair from which the eigenvalues can be more easily computed. Also, once the eigenvectors of the transformed pencil are computed, the eigenvectors of the original pencil can be recovered from those of the transformed pencil by appropriate matrix multiplication as shown above. Now let us look at into generalized square and real square decompositions. Fortunately, analogous to the square decomposition of a matrix A, there exists the generalized square decomposition of the pair A B of the matrix pencil A minus lambda B. The square decomposition of A is there exists a unitary matrices U such that U star A U is equal to T an upper triangular matrix. Generalized square decomposition of a B, pencil A B. There exists unitary matrices U1 and U2 such that U1 star A U2 and U2 star B U2 are upper triangular matrices. So you will have a matrix U1 star A U2 is T1 that is T11, T22 like this Tnn and these are all zeros, this is 0 and these are all zeros. Similarly U1 star B U2 that is equal to T2 that is T11 prime, T22 prime, Tnn prime, these are all zeros and this is a some non-zero values. The finite eigenvalues lambda i, i is equal to 1 to n of the regular pencil a minus lambda b are then given by lambda i is equal to T i i upon T i i prime where T i prime is not equal to 0. By convention the eigenvalues corresponding to the 0 diagonal entries of T 2 are infinity as per the definition. Now let us look at into the generalized real square decomposition. Analogous to the real square decomposition of a single matrix A there also exists the generalized real square decomposition of A, B in the case where both A and B are real matrices of U1, U2 can be chosen to be orthogonal. That means when A and B are both real, they exist the orthogonal matrices Q and Z such that Q transpose AZ happens to be R. So this is what we call it as an upper real square matrix. Similarly, Q transpose BZ is equal to T, this is what we call it as an upper triangular matrix. So this is very very important. Let me repeat once again. So when Q and Z are orthogonal matrices such that the equality Q transpose AZ is equal to R, an upper real square matrix and Q transpose BZ is equal to T, an upper triangular matrix. Now the pair R comma T is said to be the generalized real square form of AB. The eigenvalues of AB can be extracted from R and T as follows. The 1 by 1 diagonal blocks of RT contain the real eigenvalues of AB. The 2 by 2 diagonal blocks of RT contains the pairs of complex conjugate eigenvalues. 
For example, if R is equal to, let's say, 0, 1, 1, 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 3, 2, 0, 0, 0, 3. And T is equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 0, 2, 2, 0, 0, 0, minus 1. Then the real eigenvalues are 3 by 2, minus 3 by 1. And the two pairs of complex conjugate eigenvalues are the eigenvalues of the pair 0, 1, minus 1, 0 and 1, 0, 0, 1 which are i and minus i. Now let us look at into the, the QZ algorithm. A standard algorithm for finding the generalized real square form of the pair AB is the QZ iteration algorithm which was developed by Moller Stewart in 1973. It is a natural analog of the QR iteration for computing the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Like the QR iteration algorithm, the QZ algorithm also comes in two stages. QR iteration for the matrix A, stage 1 that is A to P transpose AP that is called upper Heisenberg matrix. And stage 2 is that is Q transpose HQ that is real square matrix. QZ iteration for the pair A comma B and stage 1 that is A is transformed to Q and transpose AZ prime is equal to A prime that is upper Heisenberg matrix and B will be Q transpose BZ prime is B prime that is upper triangular matrix and in the stage 2 A prime that is Q transpose A prime of Z is equal to R an upper real square matrix and B prime is Q transpose A prime of Z T an upper triangular matrix. So in the stage 1 is a direct and stage 2 is an iterative method. As you know very well direct method is very limited and iterative method is very exhaustive but difficult but it is exhaustive as we see in the numerical mathematics. The stage 2 is achieved by applying implicit QR algorithm to the matrix B inverse of A without explicitly forming the matrix. So this is the speciality of this uh, QR iteration algorithm. Now let us look at into the stage 1. What I do is in the stage 1 reduction to Heisenberg triangular form. Let A and B be two n by n matrices. Then, in step one, what I do is triangularize the matrix B by QR factorization. That is, find an orthogonal matrix U such that B is equal to U transpose of B is an upper triangular matrix. Then, form A is equal to U transpose A. In general, A will be of full rank. Now in the step 2, reduce A obtained in step 1 to upper Heisenberg form while preserving the triangular structure of the matrix B. This step is achieved as follows for the case n is equal to 4. So the positive sign indicates a fill-in. And in the, you apply the Givens method to this transformation that is q34 is equal to j of 34 theta in the 34 plane to the left of a then make the entity 41 of 0 and then update the matrix b so this is how you do get it so you will have a non zero entries all over and q34 you are applying so these are all non zeros over here this is a zero entry and when you apply Q34 over here, so you will have non-zero entries. These are all zeros. 
and apply the given's rotation z34 to the right of the matrix b and entry b to 0 and then update the values of b so you get as these are non zeros anyway this is different as we spoke these are all zeros and you apply z34 so these are all non zeros so essentially this much you get zero and when apply z34 so you get all our non zeros and this is a zero element so apply the given rotation z23 to the left of a to make 31 entry 0 and then update it so this is that you do have it in the previous step you apply q23 so this much is 0 and this will happen to be 0 now when you apply bq23 so this happens to be non zeros and this is the plus that input value these are all zero values so that is b is equal to q23b fill in so this is the fill in at the point 3 comma 2 entry and apply the given's rotation z23 to the right of b to make 3 by 3 to entry 0 and then update it so you will have non zeros and this is the fill in so apply z23 so this becomes non zero non zero non zero non zero this will be a upper triangle matrix and apply g23 so these are non zero this are all non zeros this is zero at this point B is upper triangular and A is Heisenberg in its first column. Now apply the given rotation Z12 to the right of matrix B to make 21 entry 0 and then update it. See this is that you do have it non zero and this is the fill in these are all zeros. So when you apply Z12 so this is becomes non zeros and this is zero and Z12 will make non zeros these are all these three are zeros this is the upper Heisenberg matrix so what is the conclusion over here is the process is similar for each aij to be zeroed two given rotations are used one applied to the left of a for zeroing an entry of a and other applied to the right of b to cover the b as a triangularity like the way which we have seen it it's a triangular matrix the what is the flop code it is interesting to see what is the flop count the process requires about 8 and q by flops for a matrix of for a matrix of size 3 or 3 if q prime and z prime are accumulated and are explicitly required then it will be additionally required about 4 in cube and 3 inch cube flops respectively right so if z prime and q prime are accumulated and are explicitly required then it will additionally require this much for a matrix of size n now quickly you can see the one example for to demonstrate this consider this example 3 by 3 and this is also 3 by 3 of course this is a dense this is also a dense there are only three zeros there are non zeros are six so obviously dense matrices since b is already an upper triangular matrix look at over here this is the main diagonal this is the main diagonal so this is an upper triangular matrix as we could see so we don't require this step one because it is already being achieved if you look at the step one to bring that matrix into a triangular matrix so this is already being done it is being given so it is a step one is skipped step two is reduce a to an upper heisenberg while retaining upper triangular structure of b and step 2.1 is form q23 to make a310 and update the matrix b so you have a matrix of like this so q23 is 100 0 0. 0 0.7071 minus 0 0.7071 0 0.7071 0 0.7071 so a is equal to a of 1 that is q23 of times of a so you get a matrix of this form and b is b1 q23b so this you get a matrix of this form fill in at the 3 by 2 entry that is the this one 3 by 2 entry
Now step 2.2 is form Z23 to make B32 0 and update this matrix CA. So what is that you do have? So this is the, these are two zeros, 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 zeros. Already it has become a sparse matrix. So B is equal to B1, Z23, B23, B, Z23. So you get a matrix like this. And finally you do arrive a matrix A that is A is equal to A1, Z23, Q23, A, Z23 and this will take into this form. So A is an upper Heisenberg matrix and B is upper triangular matrix. So they used to look at over here, this has become the upper Heisenberg matrix and B previously what we did, it has become upper triangular matrix. So this is the main triagonal below zeros. So this is what we wanted to achieve by using this uh, algorithm. So today lecture what we learned is how the matrix can be transformed into the pencils and how you can find out the upper Heisenberg matrix, upper triangular matrix for a given coefficient matrix of A. So I will stop over here. Thank you very much for hearing this lecture. Thank you once again.